Los Angeles, the place where dreams come true. Home of the rich and famous, with approximately 280 sunny days a year. Palm trees, beaches, and beautiful people. This place may look like paradise, but everyone who spends more than two weeks here knows that it's just a facade. This is where dreams come to die. 9.8 million people live here, but to me, it still feels like a ghost town. If you don't already know someone, then you might as well live alone on an island. People here care more about what you can do for them than what kind of person you are. I believe that everyone has their own personal hell, and the longer I'm here, the more it seems that mine is a so-called city of angels. And it's filled with empty shells, speaking big, meaningless words. Sometimes I just want everyone to disappear. I, I, I'm really sorry, I didn't want to bother you. And here you are bothering me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, you're Zoe Coleman, the writer, right? Yeah. I went to one of your readings a while back with my ex-girlfriend. She is a huge fan of yours. You sure you want to use that as your opening line? Um, I mean, I am also a huge fan of yours. I, I love your writing. It's not what I mean, but thank you. I appreciate it. I'm a writer, too. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. I mean, not at all like you, but uh, I was wondering if maybe you'd read my scripts. Maybe give me some notes. I need to go. I'm sorry, did I say something wrong? Look, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. If I had friends, I'd probably tell them all the stuff I'm thinking. Of course, then they wouldn't want to be my friends anymore. Or they'd act like they care, like real friends. But instead, I have internal monologues and write everything down. Hello? Hey, honey. Uh, oh, my God. Are you still asleep? Um, uh, sort of. Shit, what time is it? Well, it's 3 p.m. here, so it's noon there. Fuck. I can't believe you sleep till noon. Don't you have to get up? No, I can work whenever. That's the one thing that's good about this job. Oh, did you work late last night? No, I, I went to a party with some friends. Oh, okay. I, I'm sure it can be pretty lonely there, so I'm, I'm really glad you made some friends. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I got a copy of your new book. Oh, yeah? Did you read it? And I have to be honest, I'm kind of worried about you. Oh, we talked about this. They're just books. Fiction. I know, but they seem so autobiographical. I've just so many similarities to your life. It just proves I'm good at what I'm doing. I just want you to talk to me if you're having problems. That's what I have a therapist for, and Sam, but I will. Thank you, honey. And I'm happy that you found a therapist that you trust. <clears throat> Speaking of therapist, I am um, really running late for an appointment. I need to go. Okay, okay, call me. I love you. I love you. Bye. Sorry, I overslept. It's okay, I just got here. I am still getting used to these park sessions. Uh, it just feels a lot less like therapy for me. I get that. 
Oh, I saw your new book came out. Congratulations. Thank you. I'll bring you a copy next time. That would be great. And how's the next one coming? It's already done. I gave the manuscript to my agent last week. Wow, you've been very busy. Well, yeah. Well, what else would I do besides hanging out with Sam? And how is Samantha? She's pretty good. And have you met anyone new? You mean someone bearable? Yes. Not really. Why is this so hard for you? Honestly, because I think most people are dumb. And as soon as I think I'm smarter than somebody else, I start talking down to them. I could play along for a little while, but do I really want to hang out with somebody like that? I see. So do you think you're smarter than I am? You wouldn't be my therapist if I did. I'm seriously considering killing myself. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Killing yourself? We could do it together. No, I was thinking that you should do it. You've been a really big pain in the ass lately, so you've got my full support. How would you do it? I was thinking of jumping off a tall building somewhere. Yeah. And probably do the trick. Sounds like a solid plan. Seriously, though, this city is slowly killing What do you mean? I'm having a hard time meeting anybody real. And I'm not just talking about relationships. Friendships. Hey, I'm your friend. <laughs> That's different. I've known you my entire life. Hanging out with you is like hanging out with myself. New friends. I thought you liked being alone. To a certain degree, I do, but my solitude turns into loneliness, turns into depression. So much to do in the city, and yet nothing to do alone. Yeah, I get that. You're not gonna make some kind of a Craigslist personal ad though, right? That's like, please be my friend. <laughs> Kickball Saturdays and Sunday fun days. No, I am not that desperate. Well, that's good. On a serious note, can we not joke around about the suicide thing anymore? It bums me out. I don't know what I would do without you. I wish you'd be more like you. All right, kid. I gotta go. Now my only real friend is leaving me. Unlike you, I have a real job. No, you don't. Whatever. Look, just go do something fun, okay? Yeah, fine. Bye. Okay. Mwah. Love ya. Love you.
Hey, how you doing tonight? Pretty good, yourself? It's a slow night. You're actually my first passenger. Okay. So was it a good movie? Yeah, Eraserhead. Eraserhead? When did that come out? 1977? Oh, uh, Eraserhead, right, right, right. right. Do I know you from something? You look familiar. I doubt it. What do you do? Why? So you have a reason to tell me what you do? I'm a waitress. Oh. I used to be a bartender. But it was hard, you know, with auditions. Yeah. I'm sure all these auditions were really interfering with your bartending career. So you're an actor? Yeah, I am. It's, it's not surprising. Why do you say that? Well, LA has the highest number of Uber drivers in the country as well as the highest number of aspiring actors. Why don't we go outside? What, are you kidding? There's no air conditioning outside. Hi, what can I get for you guys? Water's fine for now, thanks. So what's new? I gave you a manuscript to the publisher. And? They loved it. Okay. But listen, can you do me a favor on the next one? Could you write something that is not so fucking depressing? I was hoping the California sun would help you. All right, what I see. I've been stopped listening to sad piano music all day and hanging out in depressing places like Starbucks. I'm serious. You need to change your image. What the fuck? People are eventually gonna stop buying your books. Like I give a shit. Oh, give a shit about the fact that you won't be able to afford your nice place in Studio City? Or is it more that you're afraid you won't be able to afford your nice cars? Oh, please. I represent 23 very successful writers. You are the only one I'm worried about. Well, don't be. This isn't just a job for me. Like, I can't control what grabs my attention. This is my soul. Well, tell your soul to be happy. Get out there, meet somebody. You're a very successful writer. You're in the most exciting city on the planet. People would kill to live like you. Yeah, kill themselves. This depressed emo shit was cute, but you're gonna be 27 years old tomorrow. Come on, cheer the fuck up. And I know you hate it, but we have to talk about a tour for your new book. Oh shit, I gotta go. Oh, and uh, the agency's having a little, you know, party at the Chateau tonight. You really should go. I'm gonna text you the info. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. So don't compare yourself to others. Art is not a competition, and anybody who thinks it is is doing it for the wrong reasons. There's always gonna be someone better at what you're doing, so I guess it just, doesn't matter as long as you're happy. How do you approach new projects? And how do you deal with writer's block? To be honest, I don't really think about it. If you want to write, you write. I don't really believe in writer's block. I think most of the time we're blocking ourselves. And if you're having trouble filling words on a blank page, it's likely that you have nothing to say. And we don't go to the bathroom if we don't have to go, right? <laughs> Hey. <laughs> nice.
thank you. Where are you coming from? Bookstore. You love the bookstore. Why do you love it so much? Because most idiots don't go there. I knew you were going to say something like that. But how many great stories ever started with this one time at the bookstore? Whatever. How was the rest of your day? It's pretty shitty, despite the fact that it involved human interaction. Well, maybe that's the root of the problem. Yeah, maybe. First, my agent tells me that I need to change my style. And then I did this Skype session with this writer's class in New York. How was that? After the Q&A session, I did this one-on-one -on -one feedback with the students. One of them left pretty upset. Why? What did you say? In the words of the infamous Mob Deep, your simple words just don't move me. And you wonder why nobody likes you. <laughs> no. I never wonder about that. Why do you even do that job? It's not like you need the money. No. I don't. But it's the only part of my job where I get to talk to other people. Yeah, but you don't need those people. Guess what? It's almost your birthday. Yay! I'm so happy all my friends showed up for that. Well, at least you've got me. Isn't that something? You know what? Let's get out of here. Let's go do something. My agency's having a party tonight. Mm, fuck that. You know, for someone who's just as depressed and lonely as I am, you really do nothing to change that. I am not the one complaining. It could be fun. You could meet someone. I hate other people. I just need you. <laughs> Here we are, worrying way too much about what we look like. Longing for something else. So many people want to be here. But once they are, it's just another city. A different place seems like a simple solution for an internal problem. And I guess it's just in human nature trying to run away from the meaninglessness of life. And I'm no better. Close my eyes In order to see Cause this world you're living in it's truly not for me Cause I'm not like you And I don't wanna be Cause you don't see the things I see No Defeated by technology. Writing and music is my only escape. Without it, I'm forced to face reality. And let's be honest, nobody wants that. I think I might be bipolar. No, you're not. Borderline. Would you stop it? Don't be one of these people who wants a mental illness just to feel special. You know how many of those people I see? Many. Too many. You're special just the way you are. I am? Yes, you are. I get that you're lonely, and that you feel misunderstood, but that's the stuff that gives you your gift. Oh, I got something for you. 
you. Really? To Dr. Sanders, who accepts that I hate his office. Thank you, Zoe. You're welcome. If you don't like the world the way it is, create your own. And you're going. I really like that quote. Have you ever heard of solipsism? No, what's that? It's a philosophical theory. It states that only the self exists or, or can be proved to exist. So basically, anything that anyone experiences or sees in any given moment is entirely created by their own mind. So my mind created a scenario where I meet my therapist at a park instead of an office? And that only exists in my mind? If the theory's accurate, yeah. Zoe Coleman is a remarkable writer. She has won numerous awards and just released her fifth novel entitled Pretty on the Outside, Dead on the Inside. Originally from New York, Coleman is now living the American dream in Los Angeles. Her following created the In Zoe We Trust hashtag, which made it on the last year's list of the 100 most popular hashtags on Twitter. Inspired by writers like Andrew Goni and Chuck Palahniuk, she definitely hit a nerve. Her raw fiction that often deals with isolation and depression seems to be the voice of a new generation. All four of her previous books became international bestsellers, and her latest title is well on its way to being this If this is the American dream, then I don't really want to know what the nightmare looks like. Surrounded by millions and yet completely alone. I fucking hate it here. It looks pretty, but that's about it. Pretty on the outside, dead on the inside. That's LA. Everybody thinks success automatically means happiness, but I can tell you that's far from the truth. with some friends earlier and now we're having a birthday dinner. Oh, really? It, it's so quiet. Well, actually, they, they just left. Oh, okay. I just wanted to check in on you. Oh, I appreciate it. Call you tomorrow. Okay, honey. And, and happy birthday. And I love you. I love you too. Happy birthday. Shit. Oh, <laughs> you scared me. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't know anybody else was here. Yeah. Thank you. <sighs> so your friends left? Yeah. When? How long have you been sitting there? Longer than you. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Zoe. What's yours? It's very nice to meet you, Zoe. I'm Michael. What do you do? I'm a waitress. Okay. What about you? Uh, well, I'm a barista. And you like to just hang out at coffee shops? Yeah, actually. I, that always seems a little crazy, but it seems familiar. I get it. 
What are you working on? It's a, it's a short story. Okay. I mean, we do live in the city of big dreams, right? Um, what if your dreams come true and you find out that it's not the answer? What do you mean? We don't actually know what we want. We can only assume until we have it, and then we know how it makes us feel. Huh. That's very true. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Maybe you should write that down. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, um, I actually have to go. It was uh, very nice to meet you, uh, Zoe the waitress. You too, Michael, the barista. Maybe we'll uh, run into each other again sometime. I like that. Me too. Bye. Ask you a weird question. It's what I'm here for. What do you think is the meaning of life? Honestly, fighting the meaninglessness. I think that's the best answer I've heard so far. Don't you tell me how you're feeling? Good. And bad. What's going on? I met someone. Someone interesting. That's terrific. Yeah, but it made me realize that I'm gonna have to get rid of Sam. Why? I think she's the reason why I feel so isolated. I mean, from everything you've told me about Sam, she seems great. Sam's not a real person. Yeah, you guys have been friends since you were nine. She's an imaginary friend. Wait, what? Even as a kid, I was so fucking alone that I had to make her up. I lied to everybody about it so no one would worry about me. That is. I mean, we need to talk about this. I need to take care of this, but... Can we schedule another session soon? Yeah, of course. Do you want to meet back here? Yeah. You think I'm a good person? You're a terrible person. Seriously. Lied a lot. <sighs> Zoe, you're the best person I know. And you never lied to hurt anybody on purpose. For some reason, these past few months have felt like a very long Sunday afternoon. Yeah. I met someone. Really? <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty cute. <laughs> Is he an Uber driver? I mean, I'm sorry, an actor? He's actually a writer. And he writes novels. Not screenplays. How refreshing. He's actually doing a reading at the bookstore in Ventura on Saturday. You're not going. Actually? Yeah. Wait, I thought we were doing something on Saturday. Sam, I've written five novels in the last four years. What does that tell you? 
that you're a boss and really fucking good at your job? It means I need to get a fucking life. I'll miss you. What do you mean? I mean, I need to let you go. I actually think you're holding me back from meeting new people. Okay. Are you mad at me? No. No, I'm not mad. It makes perfect sense. I should go. Bye. People were always asking me, did I know Zoe Coleman? What? Fight Club. Oh, yeah. Well, in that case, that should be my line. <sighs> when you're right, you're right, Zoe. Hey, Mom. Hey, honey. Is everything okay? Yeah. I just wanted to hear your voice. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you miss New York? No. I miss you. Ah, oh, sweetie. I miss you, too. So what's new at home? How's Dad? Well, your father decided he wants to sell his car. Each time I stayed inside, each time I didn't answer the phone or the door, each time I refrained from speaking, I told myself, little by little, I'm making the world a better place. But now I know I was wrong. If you don't like the world the way it is, create your own. And that's exactly what I'm doing now, but with real people. <laughs> <laughs> 